We thought we'd get one or two other opinions. We've got one so far for Brian Duncan. Vernon Lee, beaten in the first round by Roy Nicholson. Who are you going for, Vernon? Uh, no disrespects to uh, Noel, I fancy Brian. Uh, it'd be a good performance for Noel to win them both, winning in the flat and on the crown. I think it's too much of a strain, so I go for Duncan. Why? So, I think when Brian's on form, I, don't, I think he's unbeatable. If everybody played on top form, I think he would win. Fair enough, that's two for Duncan. John? Um, well, I'm going to have to make it three. Um, I think a lot depends really on, on where Noel decides to play Brian, because Noel really has been playing in the corners, which, which is suits, going to suit Brian really. So I think a lot's going to depend if Noel decides to change his game or not. But um, I think I've got to go for Duncan. Right, so we've got three opinions there. Len Higginbottom, Vernon Lee and John Bancroft, they all go for Brian Duncan. But this game, I can tell you, is far from being predictable. The commentators, as we join it right at the start, are Brian Brett and Hugh Johns. Thank you, Alton, and it's referee Frank Kitchen who goes out. And we go through the full routine. The toss, all important, of course, in this game of crown bowls. Yes, Noel leads the block. And Burrows uh, leads the block. Noel Burrows has won the toss and therefore has the first bowl at the mark that he is going to set. And a great expectancy now rustling around this green here in Martin. The favourite for the competition against Noel Burrows who's won everything that the game can offer. And his first bowl short. And away goes the favourite here. Brian Duncan. And he's short. Both men then finding it immediately difficult to judge the speed of this green. We've just heard Len Higginbottom say that it is a lot faster this morning. But there's a beautiful correction, a beautiful improvement on his first bowl by Noel Burrows. Brian Duncan then, away after it. He's close. Oh! Burrows, two. And Noel Burrows straight on the board with two. And the Brian Brett, it looks very much as though Noel is going to take uh, Brian Duncan on in the corners. Well, I think that's, <laughs> well, not a sound advice, Hugh, but it's certainly uh, a good tactic if you're brave enough, isn't it? Possibly not fully into the corners, but you, you've got to reckon at some stage that Duncan's going to take you in the corners, so you may as well have a go and try and match him. And at 2-0, a fortunate two, possibly, the second one got knocked in. Uh, Noel will be a bit happier. Finger peg bowl, that's the forehand bowl. Looking for the bowl to do the work now, for the buyers to pull it in. Just won it. Winning by a couple of feet, but still a couple of feet from the target. No, looks to be well below. It's on a length. Brian Duncan sprinting away after his bowl. Narrows the line, squeeze past the blue bowl, will win it. Two more. Duncan, two. Two for Brian Duncan. Two ends of bowls. Four shots on the board. 2-2 the score. The Waterloo champion, Brian Duncan. Twice winner of this title, the Waterloo title. Only the third man to do it. Bernard Kelly and Arthur Murray, the other two who have scored twice in I think 
it's fair to say, Brian, the up until this Crown Challenge, probably the, the one title every bowler wanted to win. Yes, yeah, the Waterloo, 2,000 plus entries, and yet, you know, the winner's uh, pickup is not as great as in some competitions. Next year it's going up from 2,000 to 2,500. This year, rather, 2,500. It's being played now, a mile down the road, every day, and that's why they reckon Duncan is the master, the best at this game. Six inch up. 18 in uh, prize money terms well short of the 12,000 pounds that these right. two bowlers are hopeful what? of picking up if they can get through to the final and win it but He's first somebody's got to have a crack at this quarter final and Noel Burrows with weight dead end Jack in the ditch As Noel goes down there of course if he was playing in his his other code the flat game be looking to count on that end because the jack would be alive in the flat game but here in crown it's all over they start again a meter from the point that the jack went into the ditch and it's Brian Duncan of course who sets the mark he set the last one the way this game is taking shape Hugh it's going to be the longest range game we've seen in the competition so far they've just they've rolled the sleeves up there's no messing about there's no feeling each other out they've gone straight into the far corners this a mark well over 50 yards to get accuracy with uh, a big round object like that running down the green which won't run straight in any case but has to take uh, account the undulations on the surface and the slope of the crown itself to get it within a foot or so a couple of feet of the jack really does take some doing at that distance only one rain drizzling down here making conditions even more difficult for the bowlers that's Noel Burrows having Don't a bang at the uh, shot bowl missing it a single to Brian Duck 3-2 Duncan leads you know for years there's been a bit of a debate in Crown Green bowls as to who is the best between these two fellows Burrows strings his wins together he'll have a season every three or four years where he wins everything in sight this Matt Brian Duncan every season picks up seven or eight titles around the handicap scene the handicaps of those competitions are from 64 upwards for good prize money pay a fiver to enter and you can pick up a thousand something like that and Duncan is the man who does it with more regularity than most through with his first ball Noel Burrows short with his but uh, it is the closer of the two balls delivered and Duncan chasing his ball then stops and tries to will it in that's one Duncan wins it at this moment but slaps his thigh in some anger with himself because there's still plenty of room for Noel Burrows to creep in here and win this. He's got a miss. It's a question now as to uh, whether it's two or not. One for certain for Noel Burrows. And uh, we have Bert Dransfield and Ken Lawson coming out to decide on the second shot. Any measured tread of the measurers. If these two have called for a measure, Hugh, it must be very, very close. Two of the keenest, four of the keenest eyes, sorry. 
in Crown Green Bowls, possessed by Brian Duncan and Mel Burrows. They don't use the steel tape, it's a string and it's the referee's job to make sure the string is tight. And it is two for Noel Burrows. So he edges in front. Edges the word because he had a little think there, Hugh, about changing things. He has been known to play the edges with a lot of success, but going back into the corner, the jack not placed in quite the same position, just trying to vary it a, a shade, all about leading well. On a good road and the weight looks right. Bang on. Duncan just cutting away underneath. Swinging wide. be eager to couple up here counting two and more importantly it's bang in the road if uh, Ron Duncan wanted to use some weight that won't be in so Couple of twos on the trot gives Noel Barrows a 6 3 advantage. Yes, and if you talk to people around the green this morning, you will find that most people are fancying Brian Duncan not only to win this particular heat but also the competition. And this is reflected in the betting where Burrows is 5 to 4 to win this game. Duncan odds on 7 to 4 on. We have a strong suspicion that the odds may fluctuate. Uh, Bowl by bowl through bowl the course of the bowl, game. Like the old professional panel days around Lancashire when they used to bet on now. Who's going to win? They will bet now. Who's going to win this end? Is that Wood going to win it? They'd have money on that. Needs to stand up a bit. Noel Burrows was two foot past with his first, so he's got to take just a little running out. And didn't judge it right, in fact, went on through. This, the faster running end of this diagonal mark, as they come towards us, it's mostly uphill. Going that way, mostly downhill. And Brian Duncan judged it very well, picks up two. It's very, very tight here with six ends of bowls completed. 6-5, Noel Burrows lead. Brian Duncan gets this jack away to set a mark almost exactly where they've been bowling all the way through this exciting quarterfinal. The winner to play Len Higginbottom. The line is good. What about the weight? Well, it needed to hit something and even then ran on through. So Frank Kitchen says, do you want to know? And he favors the yellow bowl of Brian Duncan. Gone. No. Staying on the finger peg, the forehand delivery. Could win this. Has. <laughs> Having a look now to see if it could possibly be two. 
Tavares invites the measurers on. Measure the yellow one here first, please. Right, try that. A very tight measure for two. Just the one. Just the one, two. No burrows. Seven five advantage. Yard off block. It's interesting, Brian, that uh, Noel hasn't gone as deep into the corner with this mark as they've been playing earlier going this way. Yes, I get the feeling that Noel, while he's playing the corners, is just trying to shift the land a little bit and try and catch Duncan because I think he's got to play out of his skin. He's got to play him in the corners because Duncan's going to go there at any rate. So he just needs to try and move the jack about a bit and try and just try and catch the muster out. He's got a 7-5 advantage. And if he can edge into the teens with an advantage, he's going to be very, very pleased. Yes, and I think the uh, calling on of the measure at that last mark might just have been Noel's way of slowing the game down a bit. I think you were in fire. <laughs> That's an old tactic, isn't it? Yes. Well worth it. Anything to disturb the rhythm of Brian Duncan. Brian lost his line and length there. Duncan, one. And his first bowl was counting. So it's seven six. Ah, suddenly a change of mark. Yes, and uh, Noel has forced him out of the corners now there's one that's a, a nice point to score against the ace corner man halving the green he, w he wants a few points doesn't he? he wants to get an advantage and then he can get back into the corners just just pinch a few I think the the problem has been the pace of this green I mean we've seen it from up here Hugh in the commentary position I'm, I'm just wondering what about what about down there by the green Roy Armstrong you're down there by the green what about the pace of this green well, the pace has quickened up. The water is still on the top of the green and the balls are still skimming past. But what a, what a change in tactics this is. The master corner player has come out of the corners. They've been, uh, they've been chatting to you, uh, Roy, as well, haven't they? You know, taking time off, which breaks the concentration, maybe. A little bit too. Yeah, the, uh, Noel's been uh, concerned. It's been a battle of wits, really. He, he felt that he had to keep going in the corners because if he was to play the short lens, he felt that Brian would smack them off, and conversely, that's exactly what's, what's happening now. He may himself have to decide on the change of tactics towards the end of the game and perhaps go in the opposite corners to the ones he's been playing. Well, that change of mark certainly worked wonders for Brian Duncan. Two cracking balls right on the target. And he decides now to go across the green. And he's got a beautiful lead. Well, I'm sure Noel wasn't expecting this at all. His response is equally good. Well, Anything Noel, you can do, I can do better. Absolutely, Hugh. And of course, Noel learned his tricks on a green in Manchester, the red line at Withington, where there were some funny little marks like this, and nice little cross green marks. And he is in the position here where he wants to have a look to see whether if he touches the jack, how far he needs to touch it to be in danger of running it to Duncan's backward. Good opportunity for two. There's a foot at the back. Wearing blue this morning 
is Neil Burrows, not quite the blue of his favourite Manchester City football team, but uh, he fancies blue as his lucky colour. Let's see. Yes, well, it was a colour that he favoured greatly when he won Super Bowl. <laughs> no <laughs> that, ball. <laughs> that was just to save carrying it down there. No way he was going to disturb that. Level at 8-8. Eight, eight. Now, Noel says, I don't think we'll have any more of that. We'll go back into the corner, because if you are indicating that you don't like it, Brian, that's where I'm going to take you. Is that, is that really what he's indicating? I wonder. We'll find out. Deep thinker, Brian Duncan, and of course, so is Noel Burrows. Plays a bit of chess, Noel. So this, at the moment, cat and mouse, and chess, whatever you like, but two of the shrewdest brains in the crown green game uh, try to outthink each other. Both of them equal in years of experience, I suppose. Both in their early 40s, both bowlers for oh, well over 30 years. And both uh, really professionals, Hugh, because Noel is manager of bowlers, the indoor centre down in Manchester, while Brian is a partner in a bowl supply company in. Preston, nearby in Preston. Oh, yes. One for certain. Looks like being two. Duncan, two. Two it is for Brian Duncan. And a 10 8 lead. Well, this game will go on and get even more exciting as it proceeds. We're going to leave it for a moment, but more live action here from Martin Institute in just a moment. Just two ends of bowls completed since you left us, and nobody has scored a single on each of them. So it's 10-10 at this moment. With these three balls delivered, Brian Duncan looks to be on. His final delivery. But he's definitely on now. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> now Burroughs scurries down to have a look and see what has happened here. certainly seems to indicate that the blue bowl or even bowls are on and the way Brian Duncan uh, turned away from the head seems to indicate that these measurers will confirm that Noel Burrows has won here yes I would go along with that Hugh I've never seen Noel Burrows move so smartly he was standing just waiting for the inevitable on the side of the green off the green in fact and then when that collision took place he actually leaped onto the green had a quick look and uh, asked for a measure it was certainly against him at that stage Brian is Brian Duncan's not even bothering to look down there at the oh no he's come forward now he comes in and has a little look over. Burrows won! Yes, no, Burrows won it. With the assistance of Brian Duncan, who is very, very unhappy with himself there. <coughs> so Noel takes an 11-10 lead. But the, this quarterfinal following the predictions of everybody in the game both flat bowlers and crown bowlers Brian it was going to be tight it is tight and it was also going to be a classic and it's exactly that isn't it Hugh that bowl a little indifferent good road but well through but the quality of corner play on a green that has quickened has been exceptional it's very tight you just referred to Brian Duncan looking unhappy he is unhappy when he gets a bowl a yard away he's not unhappy with that Here at uh, just around about 11 o'clock in the morning, the the rain, thankfully, has stopped. 
And so did that bolt of Noel Burris. He chucks his, his rag down. The rag he uses to dry the bowls in real disgust with himself. And this they call it two. Two. <laughs> and two it is. lead changes hands again. Brian Duncan gets his nose in front at 12-11. And there's a happy shot of Brian Duncan's wife, Gail, giving as much support as she can from the spectator seats. And what a change in tactics again, Hugh. That's twice Brian Duncan has been forced I think Roy Armson suggested earlier from his greenside position that Duncan may attempt to get into the other corners and this is what he's jockeying for now. He wants to come off the crown now with some pegging up to the jack, win this end, get into the other corner. The delivery here with the bias of the ball towards the ditch so that the slope assists the bias to bring the ball down. Big swinging arc off the forehand or the finger peg does this mark remind you of anybody in particular Hugh playing <laughs> it earlier this week with great success yes our co-commentator Tony Orcock really did exploit this mark didn't he he did indeed sir the top crown men are taking a leaf out of the book of the world indoor champion Is there no? Well, I don't know. Did he get it with that last one? I don't know. It may be. Measure. Yes. I can't split it from here. It could be a measure. It is. Referee Frank Kitchen has got a, a blue uh, sticker in his hand. He is a very, very good and true judge, is Frank Kitchen, the referee on this mm. match. Top bowler himself, won the Isle of Man Festival. Plays in many of the important competitions around the handicap scene up here in the northwest of England. Looks as though it's against Duncan, looks very unhappy, doesn't it? He's prowling around there, very unhappy. And that's why Burroughs won. So, 12 12, the score line. And, and Noel sets the mark away on the other diagonal, the one they haven't really explored so far this morning, Brian. That's absolutely right, Hugh, and that's where Brian Duncan, I feel, was going to go once he was able to win that end. He didn't, but uh, that doesn't worry Noel Burroughs. He'll take him on. He's taking him in the other corners and leading superbly. 12-12, and Burroughs now playing well. Can Duncan improve? Oh, unlucky. Well, you wouldn't have thought the gap was wide enough for the bowl to squeeze through. Noel holding one. You could see how tight that gap was. Hugh, he was waving that bowl across one day in front of the jack in case Brian got out the heavy artillery. Just missed, gone out, and that's leaving Noel Burrows too. So Noel Burrows gets his nose in front again with that two and takes a 14-12 lead. And I notice across the green, Roy Armson, the pairs partner of Noel Burrows, and Tony Alcock, our co-commentator, will be playing Fletcher, Norman Fletcher later in the quarterfinals. Just wondering, Roy, uh, the, the changing of marks here. Yes, it's a, it's a fascinating battle of wits between these two. Uh, they are, it's nip and tuck as we say, and, uh, and Tony here, I wonder if uh, 
if you've learnt anything from watching this battle. Well, I'm intrigued by it, uh, Roy, because they seem to be playing all over the place, and uh, neither of them have settled on to a consistent length. I think they're both confident of playing any mark and any length, and they're just trying to find out the other person's weakness. They seem to be playing from their own strength and, and finding the, uh, the weak spots of uh, the opposition. Yeah, I think of the two, um, Brian just looks a little tense to me, and Noel's a little appears to be the more relaxed. What, what do you think? Well, yeah, I think you're right. I think uh, Brian probably realises that this is a crunch game, and uh, he's, if he gets through this, he's probably got a good chance of winning the tournament. But, you know, Roy, in this situation, who's got the greatest bottle? I mean, you know, when, if it came to 2020, uh, let's forget about ability. Who's got the mental, mental uh, ability to get themselves through? Oh, they're both very good in that department. They've both been in similar positions as this before, and uh, th neither of them would be short of bottle. Now, they won't be thinking of that prize money, then, and... Uh, Oh, I think they'll have the pound note signs in their eyes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 And sometimes in the flat green, we play for pride. I mean, sometimes to win our own county championship, with, with, which is, you know, purely amateur status, no money on it, is as, as important as winning a big major money prize. I mean, how much more does the money make this, this uh, attractive? Well, I think the money is really at the back of their mind, and Noel especially is one of those people who does play for a lot of pers personal pride. He does. You think yeah. he's a money player then, do you, Roy? Oh, yeah, yeah. You do, yeah. I mean, I've, I've noticed Noel in, in uh, the big tournaments indoor, and he's certainly, when the money's there, great. Yeah. Well, we've got uh, this incredibly tense encounter. Nothing in it at all. Ron Duncan chasing his second bowl into this this mark a curious mark in many respects neither one thing nor the other Noel's last bowl he leads 14-13 wants some running don't think he's beaten Duncan what? Brian Duncan scores another single. And we'll level again at 14-14. And I tell you what, it's going to surprise a few people again, Hugh, because he's cut straight across the green towards a massive leaderboard, right underneath it, in fact. And this is a mark. This is a new mark. They must have gone on eight and nine different marks so far. What are we at? We're at the 20th end, eight and nine different marks. Two of the world's greatest corner bowlers going all over the place. certainly intent on testing each other out the forecast uh, the confident forecast of most people that it would be a corner battle has already gone out of the window yes it started that way but the tactics then switched very quickly and this is a mark that the last bowler up which in this case is no bowlers is going to fancy because it doesn't appear to be one of the more difficult marks and Duncan has been found out two yards short well he said it this surely must come in for two. Stays for two. Noel Burrows again in the lead. 16 14. But it's been this way right through this absorbing quarterfinal match. Yes, there's never been more than two points between them, Hugh. We just one like this, we're going to get to 20 across. We are going to have one of those situations. <laughs> there is a move in the Crown Green game, if you get to a 20 across situation, to ask for the first person to get a difference of two points. A bit like the old tennis days. I don't think it happened. This is the 21-up game, and this is Duncan coming in to change things again. Cracking ball. Thumb peg, that's the backhand draw. Oof. The ball with the bias swinging from left to right as it leaves the bowler's hand. Coupling up for two and the crowd are calling two. And they're right. And we're level again. 16 across. 
It's 16 across, heading for home. And where are we going? We're going back in the corners. Is this where it's going to be decided? And it's deep in the corner, too. This around about uh, 52, 53 yards. Oh, right on. Brilliant. He came halfway across the green to have a look at that, Brian Duncan. He's, uh, he's in for real now. The jack now no more than a couple of foot from the, from the gutter, from the ditch. And it's certainly going to be difficult Watch for... Watch on two feet, anything past is off. You're 18 inch off. Well, there you are. The pole is getting explicit, explicit geography of this situation. That'll not change anything. Noel Burrows putting lots of running in this ball. Now, what's he going to hit? He needs to hit something. Oh, he's won it, I think. Just that tiny bit of running. Knocks one ball out. Well, they've made their minds up. They're just waiting for Noel to arrive to confirm it. But, you know, it might Duncan be against feels him. it's one. But Noel, I think, will ask for a measure on this, surely. <laughs> he gazes side down there. Side by side, yes. They're absolutely side by side. This is Burroughs watching that. Sue sitting there in the red. Doris Armson, wife of Roy. Great bowler Thanks. herself. Yeah, measure. But I noticed Frank Kitchen uh, fancies the yellow bowl. Yellow one first. And it's the yellow they're, bowl, they're measuring first. Very, very close. Making quite sure that the bowl doesn't move as they, as they measure it. Duncan! One! And one it was. A tight, tight measure. And we've had a lot of tight measures already. <laughs> Well, we have because they're great judges. I would think less than half an inch in that. As Brian Duncan looks lovingly off into the far corner, sets a mark way, way over there. And here it's very much about weight because it's mostly downhill. The ball through. Just about caught the line. That's the the winner. So Brian Duncan putting his second in. Count against him at the moment. He's cut that very narrow and short. So no knows that uh, the score is level at this moment. Can he knows in front to pick up a two here? And they're waving in two, and they're calling two, and they're dead right. Two for Noel Burrows. 18-17 his lead. Just having a little think about where he's going this time, Noel back towards the corners might just shift the mark a shade Hugh doesn't want to go back on a mark that Duncan set slightly different this uh, finger peg mark is the bias pulling it in towards the jack now a bowl at the end of its travel tipples over. Running. Duncan looks heavy. Run through at the back. Just go. Oh, must be feeling good at this moment. 
18-17 his lead and he's holding here with this ball this for two and that of course puts him if Duncan can't improve it just a point away from a tremendous upset lying with two burrows and more importantly those two bowls very very much in the uh, in the draw it's going to need something special now for Brian Duncan to squeeze in hey it's coming well Chance. it's working for him Chance. oh Brian you thinks went. he's got it no has a look and it's there what a cracking ball and we're leveled again 18 across we are indeed a little conversation there of course with Tony Alcock who's great got the greater bottle never mind the ability you can't split them two of the all-time greats in this marvelous game of crown bowls putting on a real thriller here oh it's gone that was no time for Brian Duncan to put one in the ditch it's trickling well it could oh yes stayed on the green dips away viciously towards the gutter there towards the ditch They're calling it short he may just want to save it this time it's not a good one support for Noel Barrows coming up from the crowd as he puts his second bowl in as long as he beats the yellow bowl he's on for two well well I don't know whether it has his line might be better it yes is. he has well now we're coming right down to the wire Noel Burrows 20 the favorite for the competition favorite to win this 12,000 pounds first prize here Brian Duncan on 18 well we've had some uh, upsets already this week Brian uh, is the favorite going out here in the quarter final? don't ask me a question like that you all I will tell you is this when no Burroughs has been asked the question right at the top he's done it he's answered it he won Super Bowl against all the odds he won the Target Bowls Championship of the UK He's won the Waterloo, he's won the All England, he's won virtually everything there is to win. And when it counts, he's been there. Well, Bill, Brian Duncan. They say, hey, up. It's on a good road. Oh, yes. oh, that is a bowl and a half. That is something that Brian Duncan surely cannot he beat. He comes with weight. Got it. The jack is staying on. If the jack stays on, it stayed on. Who's won it? It's but gone against him. Ball's gone. No, ball has gone. So it's Brian Duncan who wins it. What a fantastic shot at 2018 down to pull off a shot like that. That is quite unbelievable. Well, I don't know. He fired. We've seen the firing shot so effective in the past by Duncan, but he was so lucky. Clips the jack. We look at the bowl which goes off. The jack stays on the edge and counts for Duncan. Incredible. Is standing behind Brian Duncan now can hardly believe it. And I'm sure Brian Duncan's heart was pounding a bit then. Twenty nineteen as Noel Burrows puts his first ball to this block. The ball coming down with the crown and the bias. And it's another beauty that could be the quarter-final winner and once again Brian Duncan under pressure Noel Burrows comes down the green wants to see where this this winds up 
It's trying, it's trying desperately hard. Oh, it is trying. Oh, and Brand thinks he's won it with that bowl. Gets confirmation from the referee and Susan, Noel's wife. Wonders what her husband is going to do with this, this delivery. It's on a road, it's on a very, very good road. Oh, it's still the yellow ball that's in. Incredible, I cannot believe it. What an incredible, well, three of those balls were absolutely brilliant. And now, unless the jack goes in the ditch, it's all on this end, 20 across. Never at any time have there been more than two points between these bowlers. It's gone for 28. Heart-stopping ends. How they can keep their hands still, how they can hang on to those jangling nerves, I don't know. Look at that. Oh! No Burrows has really got to find something to beat that ball. Brian Duncan must firmly believe that he's going to make it now. Though Noel Burrows surely has to have a bang at this. He's waving it on to try and get it in front of the block to try and protect the match-winning bowl. Noel Burrows has got to have a bang at this. What's it like? It's gone! And Brian Duncan has won the most heart-stopping match I think we'll see here in this whole competition. Noel Burrows, so disconsolate, his shoulders drooping. He had the match at 2018. It went to 20 across. And Brian Duncan wins it with a superb first delivery. A marvellous match. Brian Duncan goes through to meet Len Higginbottom in the semi-final with the result here, 21-20. Brian, well, I mean, that was just the most amazing game of bowls I think anyone's ever seen. It's been a, good, a very good game. All the way through with the finish had been marvellous. Like, it looked like I'd lost and I thought the jack was going off here and I saw no as well. I thought we going to stop on it. Just, I just got the... That's the Russell to finish really, but uh, it's been really a good game all the way through really. It's a pity there's something to lose, but that's how it goes. Well, that's right, no, I mean, <laughs> quite. So, say that again, I'm sorry. Just devastated after that. I think the absolute sickness must have been when your bowl just agonisingly rolled into the ditch. Yeah, and the next end when I played two perfect balls and they didn't count. Just, a, just sheer damn luck at the end. <laughs> Is there Good any... game all the way oh. through, but... Uh, just unbelievable, unbelievable. Is there any consolation in defeat at all that, I mean, you just played out of your skin and, and really the, the, there was nothing between the two of you, Brian. That, I think that's yeah. true, isn't it? Well, no, that's how it was all through the game. There was never more than two in it, I don't think. And, uh, well, I had to go, go to a bit of luck at the end, unfortunately. Well, I think we must concentrate now on the tournament favourite. I don't think you're going to have a harder match than <clears> that. I hope not, anyway. <laughs> well, <laughs> It's, when we play tomorrow, it's a different day, but it, it was a very good game. I mean, we expected it to be a good game. Hopefully, we, we both played more or less a game. And uh, as we said from the television point of view, I think it was a very good game. And from spectators, I mean, just the last two or three ends, well, that was marvellous for them. Like. Have you been involved in your long career in, in a more dramatic match than that? Well, I mean, I think I've probably been in as dramatic a match than like, really, but I think it's just... Uh, the you, occasion you, the as well. The occasion and what yeah. you're playing for today. I mean, it, it makes such a big difference winning like, and uh, well, I'm just happy to win, really. Some great tussles between the two of you over the years. We've had a lot of good games, and uh, I don't know, I don't keep a record actually, but we've had a lot of good games, and I don't know, it's just, I would, if I was Noel in the same position he would, I'd be a bit sick myself like, but that's just, you've just got to accept it and carry on regardless. Right, well, your semi finals against Len Higginbottom, that's going to be another cracking match.